I that's how I started music. I taught myself how to play all my instruments. Really? Yeah. I didn't know anything like like even when I went to Berkeley, I didn't even know music theory yet. You didn't know what you was doing. You no, just I like, just I, do I just do it by ear. <laughs> that's like crazy. I I taught myself how to play songs just by like listening to um No, 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 you're good. Just by listening to the song and figuring out the chords by that's ear. That's crazy. And that's yeah. literally like how I did it too is just knowing what I wanted to hear and then making yeah. it happen. And YouTube helped. Yeah, YouTube definitely helps a lot. YouTube is like yeah, it comes in clutch. That's the way. What's going on, y'all? This is Cruise with Cruise Control Radio. Man, we here right now. You know where we at. We at home. That's what we calling it here, man. And right now, today, we got a special guest with us today. Ileana. Help me out. I forgot it already. <laughs> Vera Montez. Vera Montez. Vera Montez, yeah. Ileana Vera Montez. What's going on? I'm hanging. It's good. I'm excited to be here. That's dope. So it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy because I usually don't do this, and um, I felt like I kind of scouted you a little bit. Yes. Like <laughs> I was just out <laughs> getting a burger, and I was like, "Oh shit, this sounds really good." Like raw vocals. Um, we were at um, where did I meet you at? It was at um, it was at Margaritaville actually. Margar- on oh, Broadway. we were talking about margaritas. Look at he would have yeah. loved it there. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. Like their margaritas are fire. There, nah, these well, they're so good. they're honestly so good. Yeah. <laughs> not as dope. So when you're performing down there, is that something like um, you could just bring your stuff and go there? Or just, is this something you have to rehearse for to get on there? So like audition I, for. So when I first moved to Nashville, I honestly like didn't really know anything about Nashville. I just knew the only music scene thing that I knew about was Broadway. Mm-hmm. So I moved there. And then literally gave myself a week to move into my apartment, kind of get settled. And then I was like, I'm just going to go audition. <laughs> right. So I started actually in um, a different circuit. I started in the Tootsie circuit. So okay. that's Tootsie's, Honky Tonk Central, Kid Rock, and Rippies. Mm-hmm. So I was playing there all the time. I was doing like four to five shows a week. Oh. Um, so that was kind of just my main source of income, just kind of getting myself settled. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, okay, I don't think I want to do this anymore. There's a lot of reasons why I uh-huh. can get into this later. But um, so I was like, you know what? Why not try Margaritaville? I mean, it's right there. It's an acoustic set, which I liked because I had more control of what I get to do. Okay. feels more personal, too. You know, like I get to, like, meet people like you, yeah, for yeah. example. Mm-hmm. Um, I can kind of do my own thing. I like interacting with everyone. I like talking to people when I can. Um I also like that I get to play my own music and I get to pick uh, what I play. So, oh, so they didn't let you like do originals at the other circuit? No, it's wow. all covers. Yeah, it's all covers, and that's okay. not what I want to do. And I'm still kind of um, getting myself out of the cover band situation, the cover gigs. But yeah. it's it's good money, honestly. Right. So so it's it's a good it's a good gig. But I didn't even answer your question. Anyways, no, you know, <laughs> this is how it goes. This is how it goes. That's fine. But um, so yeah, I kind of just showed up one day and I introduced myself, asked who the booker was. Um, Usually you do an audition, but I kind of just gave them my background. I have a whole like Dropbox link thing. I sent them an email with all my information and they liked me. So Mm kind of just went from there. That's dope. So really just having that, um, because a lot of people would show up and not have that already handy, basically a resume. Yeah. And and sending that. So typically people would have to audition, but you were like, I'm her, so. Yeah, pretty, no. <laughs> pretty much, no. <laughs> Honestly, being on The Voice definitely gives me a lot of credibility. If if it did yeah. anything for me, which it did it did a good amount, but yeah. that definitely helps me a lot is having that as credibility whenever yeah. I want to, like, play somewhere. Or how, did that, that. how did that situation happen with uh, being on The Voice? So it actually was kind of crazy. Shout out to my mom because. Shout out to mom. Yes, love her. <laughs> but um, I was anxiously waiting for my college acceptance letter Mm -hmm. and my mom sneaky woman that she is (laughs) she was on her little computer and she had like all my videos she just has literally probably every video of me singing ever wow and she was like you know what like I'm gonna like send this to the producers of the voice and see what happens because she was like anxious (laughs) for me yeah um and like then they gotta hear it is yeah and <laughs> so then it actually ended up working out i ended up being able to um 
audition, I there's actually so many auditions that you have to go through with the producers, but mm-hmm. um, I actually didn't have to do the like open call audition. They mm. kind of let my video be my open call, oh, wow. and then um, I went straight to Vegas actually and wow. started the whole process. So is that something that they paid for? They're like, hey, or is that something they make you invest in? Is you know, getting a place out there, you know, in that whole situation. Yeah, so I only was there for, like, every time I auditioned, except for the actual blind audition process, Mm -hmm. um, I was only there for a couple days at a time. Okay. Yeah, so it actually, it wasn't bad. Um, I probably had to do five or six auditions with the producers before I could actually even get to the blind audition process so Mm -hmm. it's actually there's so much that goes into it that you like wouldn't even think about right yeah yeah six auditions yeah about six I don't that's crazy what what else are they looking for (laughs) like so it was kind of crazy it was um there was a lot of interview practice to Mm -hmm. see like if you would even do well on tv because you know a big part of it is having the personality and Right. Stuff that they're looking for. Um, because they obviously don't want to have to like take forever to record someone if they're being shy or like, right. which obviously happens, of course. But, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, they they did like random things. Like, I remember I had to go like in this room with this guy, and it was kind of set up like this actually. And mm-hmm. they were having us just like play a game and just to kind of see your personality see how you and how, yeah, and just yeah. how you act with people. Um, so that was part of the audition That's as well. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy. like um, what's that called when they have a bunch of people in the room and um, they trying to do a study on people. What is that shit called? What is that called? <laughs> I don't even know. Huh? <laughs> huh? A study? Yeah, it's like um, you got people in the room and what? You said what is that thing called when you're st- you have people in a room and you study? And he said a study. study? <laughs> 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 oh my god! I swear we need to get Swayze a mic just to just to hear the shit he be saying. <laughs> So, um, so anyways, um, so now that you, um, you were saying you, you went to college, Mm -hmm. um, was that before or after the voice? It was after the voice. So I deferred my first year at Berkeley, which is why I, I was, we were kind of talking earlier about how I, um, I kind of zoomed through the process. I finished in three years instead of four. Mm -hmm. Um, crazy. But yeah, so That's I a headache though. That ain't that like stressful. It, it honestly was so stressful. I actually have like videos of, and I oh my gosh, I am like the biggest procrastinator <laughs> in the world. It used to drive my mom crazy. It drove it drives everyone crazy. Mm-hmm. If I'm honest, if you know me, are you I'm, a Capricorn? I am not a Capricorn. Guess if you're not a Capricorn, you're no. a Leo. Uh, I have a Leo in my chart. I actually okay. am not like a. You're uh, not a astro- charty. astrology person, but I know these things. Cause so what are you? Where is your Pisces. Bird? Ah, he's a Pisces. You're he a Pisces, <laughs> yeah. We we vibed, we vibed. Yeah, we're Pisces. What That's are you? That's crazy. Me, I'm an Aquarius. An Aquarius, yeah. cool. I I give the water to y'all. I'm, you know, what I'm saying like <laughs> that's what I do. So I, I look out for y'all and stuff. So love that. But love um, it. I forget why we started talking about that. But um, oh, because I was saying I procrastinate everything. Oh yes, but yeah. you're also creative though, like. They say, like, creatives have ADHD, but it's really just because we're always thinking about creating. Do you yeah. feel like that's your problem, or are you just It honestly not is, a like, sometimes? a big thing sometimes, because I think my brain is always, like, a million miles a minute. Like, I have so many things I want to do that I'm, like, I start doing one thing, and I'm, like, oh, my God. And then I start doing another <laughs> thing, and I'm, like, oh, my God, wait. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, I'm I'm, like, very adamant about, being creative every single day and yeah. um you know whether that's just writing in my journal maybe nothing comes of it but i just like to keep my flow going so so you journal yeah so is that um something is you like morning pages or is it just throughout your day you're just kind of throughout my day honestly um i always have my phone app too i know that's technically not journaling but you know like throughout the day if i have an idea or something i'll write it in my notes mm. i have like pages written down in my notes i've also like My journal just, I feel like, honestly, not to get, like, morbid or anything, but, like, if I died, I'd be, like, my journal, it has, like, every single thing you want to know, you know? That's crazy. I was just thinking about death earlier today, and it's (laughs) just just crazy, because we had someone from my hometown that um, passed away, she just got a random illness and passed away, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, yo, like, this shit is not promised, like, we're really not 
we're on borrowed time. Like, and then I started thinking, like, damn, I'm 30. And I'm like, in 30 more years, I'm going to be 60. I'm like, damn. Like, this is not a forever <laughs> thing. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. It, it honestly, it stresses me out when I think about it too much. Like, yeah. I just can't. Same. I, I just, it, it, like, kind of paralyzes me. Yep. But also, when you think about it, when you think about 30 years, like, all the time up until now, that's so long. It Thinking is. about doing that again, you're like, oh, shit. Okay, I have time. <laughs> you're and like, that's okay. I could do 30. I could do 60 more years and be 90. Now, if I get to 100, I'm going to just say, listen, take me out. <laughs> 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 I, I can't even. <laughs> yeah, I'm Unless done. Unless I'm, like, blissfully unaware. Like, if I have Alzheimer's or something, like, whatever. Like, yeah. It's like, I I'm don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have it. <laughs> right. Everybody else is the problem. <laughs> uh, Alzheimer's is not funny. It's a crazy... Um, <laughs> I try to be political out here, political, uh, whatever. But um, so it is not funny. I'm sorry. No, it's hilarious. It's it's hilarious. But like when someone has to deal with that shit every day, yeah, it's it's it's, it's honestly insane. really sad. It's but it's really sad. funny to talk about because <laughs> I think I have Alzheimer's sometimes. So I had a stroke about two years ago, and now every time, like I'm forgetting something, I always be like, oh shit, like it's happening again. Do you ever deal with things in your life where um? you know, you have that type of PTSD of something that takes you back to that and you get to, like, fuck, and it puts you in this spot where, like, you mm-hmm. can't be creative, you can't... Yeah, for sure. Just block off the world for a month. hmm Dope. It sucks, Is that honestly. dope? No, it's not dope. It's not dope. Not at all. <laughs> it's, it's dope when you get out of it. Right, <laughs> right. It really is, but I... it Yeah, I've had... I've definitely had moments like that where, yeah, it could last, like, a month. Like, I had, like... Yeah. Especially, like, in college, I had a couple of periods of time where no matter how hard I tried I just could not get myself to write I think it's also because whenever I wanted to write my brain wanted to write about what was bothering me Mm. and so I'm like I don't want to deal with it like I don't like I was it was too much so (laughs) Mm -hmm. it I it was it sucks honestly yeah no and that's and that worst part um being a creative Mm. is that your spirit depends on you to be creative and when you're not it makes you depressed like yes exactly mm -hmm. i i honestly struggle a lot with intertwining like my happiness and like my confidence with what i choose to do for a living Mm. because it's so personal and it's like you know when i don't feel confident in my music and in my like career it's so hard for me to feel confident in every other right. aspect honestly of life yeah and because it's that's and that's you. really toxic honestly because yeah you know you can't live like that yeah it's it's hard especially if you have like a counterpart another person that you deal with like um like i have a fiance me and her we um we're both creatives and we kind of like butt heads a lot because yeah. we're always thinking about you know doing something or entrepreneurship something so i'm sure that it is tough to deal with especially you play a bunch of different instruments right and yeah you, you taught yourself how did you teach yourself how to play the piano so when i was little i i don't even know i i just loved singing that was what i started with mm-hmm. i love singing i remember my dad was kind of the one that got me into all of it because my dad plays the drums Dope. he Introduced me to Gwen Stefani. Yeah, Love shout her. out Gwen. Um, <laughs> Gwen Stefani. I loved Britney Spears. Like all of these like pop icons. Love it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of what started it. I loved singing first, and then um, I would watch these music videos, obviously. And I was like, okay, I feel like I could play the piano. So I I got my first piano, and I honestly just started off. I learned by ear, so I would listen I would play songs over and over again like the first like 30 seconds I'd I'd probably drove my family crazy (laughs) all the time it was like first 30 seconds okay how do I play this and I'd find the note on the keyboard wow find the chords and then I'd move on and then finally I'd get to the whole song wow that's like some Beethoven shit (laughs) (laughs) like like he was like I I think I heard like Beethoven was deaf or or is that Bach one of them was deaf I think Beethoven was deaf that's crazy are you deaf no, no, I'm not, not deaf. <laughs> I am blind though. I'm You're I'm blind? so blind. That's yeah. why you couldn't find a thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. I pulled up I, I pulled up to like a Baptist church. I was like, uh. She said, okay. What's no, going I, like, on? No, I like I called my mom. I was like, uh I don't think this is correct. <laughs> it was like oh a ba- it like looked abandoned. No. That's but hilarious. like actually I, I am so blind. I if I took my contacts out right now, I could not drive home. 
That's safely. crazy. Well, make would, sure you keep those in. Oh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't want to see what I look like trying to walk around Minimum, here. Like blind. an old lady <laughs> with Alzheimer's. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> no. That's but I, you know what I think about all the time is like if there was an apocalypse or something, I actually would be screwed. Because it, I can't see anything. What? So, hold on. So, we, I'm not familiar mm-hmm. with context. So, you have to renew them all the yeah, time? Yeah. So, oh, I yeah, wear, like, the, the daily ones. So, I have to replace them every day. Oh, shit. That's I a have lot glasses. I know, like, if I had my glasses. But, like, what if it starts when I don't have my glasses? That would be terrible. You'd be, like, be like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what if it starts when I don't have my glasses? <laughs> well, you might as well just have that on you at all times. Honestly, I probably should. Because you might. <laughs> I always think if there's an apocalypse, I'm hoping that I'm not going to have to be the person that's surviving out here and doing all this extra shit. Like, it's like, take me to fuck out. Like, if an asteroid comes, <laughs> make sure out. <laughs> take, take, make sure my family. No, you know what? Actually, no, I got kids. I have to make sure. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I <Fuck>. said damn. <laughs> so, back to Barclays. Is that what it's called? Berkeley. Berkeley's. Berkeley. Berkeley. Bar- it's a dog school. <laughs> <laughs> Barkley. Hey, that's like a good, that would be a good like dog training school. <laughs> right. <laughs> Barkley. <laughs> Stop making my damn dog bark. All right. So at Berkeley, and excuse my ignorance because Swayze said it's like a really good like music yeah. school. Yeah. So what made you want to choose that school? So when I was really little, I had this dream and it still is part of my dream to live in New York, but I wanted to live in New York. I wanted to go to Juilliard. Mm. that's like you've definitely heard of juilliard I, no. you haven't heard I just, of juilliard? i just agreed so i don't seem stupid but yeah he's like <laughs> what yeah yeah no i'm not all right I'm sorry. all right all right i'm an airhead but um i wanted to go to juilliard that's what i thought mm-hmm. but then as i got older i'm like i actually don't do classical i don't do classical music juilliard okay. is more classical that's you know dance so. yeah okay. and all that and so i was like okay what fits the same thing except contemporary like pop what i want to do and it was mm-hmm. berkeley and then um i remember it was like my junior year um one of my friends got into berkeley and that's i kind of started looking into it more after that and um i went to one of their summer camps so they do these super awesome summer camps you get to go and live in the dorms oh, dope. you get to do classes you kind of get the feel of what it would be like to go there mm-hmm. um that's and i just like fell in love with it i fell in love with boston oh my god Love Boston. Have you been to Boston? I've never, I've never been to Boston. The f- furthest I've been up was probably Manhattan, New York. I've I, never I been up further than that. But yeah, Boston definitely was a magical place. I what part of it. Boston? I lived in Back Bay. Back Bay is near. So it's, it's like sounds a little crazy. Back Bay sounds a little scary. <laughs> you like Back Bay? <laughs> <laughs> you got a nice Back Bay, like. <laughs> I'm so dead. No, <laughs> it's actually really, really nice. Um, it's have you heard of Cambridge? That's like where yes, Harvard is. Yes. It's it's super close to Cambridge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dope. So, you're initially you're originally from you said New Mexico. Yeah. How I've never met someone from from New Mexico. Neither have. So what happens is, is New Mexico like the new version of Mexico, or did they just name it that? I'm confused. <laughs> I was about to be like, what happens in New Mexico? I'm like. Right. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of stuff. <laughs> Humans are there. <laughs> no, I actually don't know, honestly. I, it's just New Mexico. New Mexico is lit. Shout yeah. out to New Mexico. What made you feel like you had to get out of New Mexico, though, to be the person you are? So, actually, I had no choice. Um, fire. That's lit. Yeah. You're like, fire. No choice. <laughs> no so, choice is fire. Um, yeah, growing up, I moved around a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. My It started because my dad was in the FBI. Shout and then, him. yeah, and then um, it was my mom's job, actually. She was she did a lot of, like, corporate jobs in retail mm-hmm. um, that always had her moving around to, like, different regions. So yeah. I was born in Albuquerque, and then we lived there for a little bit, and then we lived in El Paso, Texas. So all of my, like, extended family is still in New Mexico and El Paso. That's where... We still go every Christmas, every summer. Oh. Like that's like our main base for yeah. home with our family. Cool. Um, and then we went from El Paso, Texas. We lived in Austin, Texas for a little bit, and then from Texas we went to Louisiana. Okay. Then from Louisiana, we went to Wisconsin, and then from Wisconsin <laughs> we went so, to California. 
So you went back all the way back. Okay. Yeah. So then we were in Cal. We were in the Bay Area for like that's lit. Ten, eleven years. Do you know we spent E40? a lot of time there. Mm-mm. Do you know who E40 is? Mm-mm. Oh my yes, god. Yes. Now I got you because I don't know Berkeley or. Tutelini, whatever you said in New York. Tutelini? <laughs> that sounds like a pasta. <laughs> there you go. E40 is a, a rapper. Um, he actually, I know the name. He, I ra- don't... he raps like real, like weird and like he had his own style. But um, yeah. he's fr- he raps the Bay Area. That's why I wanted to know if you knew him. Damn. I got to, that's going to be what I do when I leave. I'm going to put E40 on. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're going to actually play through the speakers. You're gonna okay, like, yeah, this I'm is. ready. I'm ready. <laughs> but um, but uh, so, yeah, so you went California, over to Cal. Okay. <laughs> California. And then um, my family moved out of California when I was in Boston. So then I moved to Boston. And then they moved to Seattle for a bit. Mm. Um, visited while they were there for a little bit. So they were in Seattle. And then um, from Seattle, they were in Minnesota. <laughs> What? Hold so on, I went hold home on. to Minnes- <laughs> Then I would go home to Minnesota. Wait, just home wait. to Minnesota. All right, yeah, go ahead. I'll then, save my question. <laughs> then from Minnesota, this is where it gets really random. Okay, we were in Arkansas, Arkansas. The hell is in Arkansas? That's what my question only, was. Only um the college. I only thing I know there's. The oh college. my gosh, Ozark! I love Ozark. I have to oh, talk about that later. You but, been? Um, no, I love the show. Oh, I thought you meant like you was there with with Marty. Marty Bird. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, then we were in Arkansas. I actually ended up really loving Arkansas. We were in like way northwest Arkansas. Okay. So um, it was so pretty. Honestly, I ha- I didn't even know anyone there. Like it was kind of nice. Honestly, it was mm-hmm. during quarantine. I had oh, no friends, literally brand new slate. And it was kind of cool. Like I actually got a lot of my favorite songs out of living there because oh. I had like nothing else to do. Right, it was quarantine. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I had my little things that I'd do. Like I would always drive to the park. I would go to this one park and I would write and I would listen to music. It was honestly really nice. Oh. Really randomly loved Arkansas. Kind of didn't never never expected that. Um, do people there call it Arkansas? Because I heard it's called Arkansas. They call it Arkansas. I don't do know. They? There's probably people that call it Arkansas. Are they a little slow? <laughs> if, if, <laughs> they might be. They might be. <laughs> I heard that. Not so Arkansas. You mean Arkansas? I said no. It's Arkansas. So I work at. Um, I sell CPAP supplies for a living. That's okay. what I do. And I talk to a lot of old people, and that's how they talk. That's why I did that voice. It was honestly very accurate. I try and tell every day. Talk you, to two hundred people a day. That's so funny. Yeah. I love that. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas is lit. Okay, and then from Arkansas. We went to Michigan, and now my parents are still in Michigan. Oh, my God. And it's, I, I feel like there's more. There's going to be more. I well, mean, then I moved here. here. Okay. Yeah. So f- from Michigan, and you're from Indianapolis. You know Michigan, right? Okay. So why? Why are we bouncing around everywhere? Are we well, not comfortable? Do we not like comfortability? Do we want to be more, like, on our toes? Why, is we, why are we moving around? Well, it's a good question, actually. <laughs> it wasn't. Because of the comfortability thing. Honestly, mm-hmm. I've, if it was up to my parents, they would move back to Texas immediately, like, to okay. be close to our family. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really just the job. Like, the my mom was, like, moving up in her company, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it was, like, something she couldn't turn down, some offers yeah. that, you know, mm-hmm. just would only benefit us because I have two brothers, too. And, you know, oh. it's, like, so much to take get us all through college. <laughs> right. Are you the um, oldest? I'm the middle child, actually. Oh, that's yeah. why you're so, like, you understand. You're, like, down to earth and stuff, I feel like. Yeah. Because when definitely. you're an older child, you're an asshole. When you're the younger child, you're a brat. But the middle child is, like. Yeah, different. and I'm the only girl, too. So, like. There you go. You know, it has its perks. Also had its not so Would perks. Would they, like, try to beat your ass? Like, oh, yeah. I yeah. got my ass beat so many times. <laughs> like, actually, so many times. But I also did. made me tough. I, mm-hmm. I actually. When. When my brother was little, mm-hmm. we used to get into it, like, a lot. And my dad used to do this funny thing um, where he – it was honestly kind of crazy. Don't judge us. No, <laughs> but, like, fine. my dad was just like, all right, guys, you have one minute to go ham on each other. Yeah. And after the minute's up, you're done. <laughs> dad, <laughs> shout out to your dad. Because <laughs> I have twins, and that's what – I want to do, but my fiance is like, no, what is wrong with you? I'm like, let them fucking figure it out. No, honestly, though, like, those, like, that rageful minute, like, 
cured so much of our anger <laughs> because <laughs> we're like, all right, we're done. Like, we're cool. Whatever. Right. It's like, I'm tired. Like, it's, you know, fighting is very exhausting. It is. So a whole minute of straight <laughs> swinging is like, all right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> obviously my dad would never let it get to like Where you're crazy like punching point. each other oh, in yeah, the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Um, that definitely happened, but not on his watch. Right. Obviously. <laughs> but, but, yeah. <clears throat> Crazy Not as stuff. cool. Yeah, because I have, um, it's four boys in my home. Well, not in my home, but where I grew up. Yeah. And then my sister was the only girl. And, man, we used to terrorize her, and she, she hated for it. for your sister. <laughs> she hated it. I only it. had two. Oh, my God. Yeah, she had a deal she had with three, four of us. Four? Yeah. Four of boys, and then her. And then her, yep. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, so she's uh, she's she's a little tough. Um, yeah, it definitely makes you tough. For and sure. you know what's crazy? She so we lived in Pennsylvania. She moved once she turned eighteen. She moved all the way to Miami. <laughs> she said, "I'm getting the fuck away from these guys." Like uh, so, I'm so, but dead. no, she's um. No, I love. I I'm honestly really close with my brothers. I I love them. Yeah. They they gave me a lot of shit, but you mm-hmm. know I gave them a lot of shit in my own way too. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's how I think that <clears throat> it's just natural. Um. Yeah. You know, having that, and so when you started singing and taking it serious. When w- when was that where you're like, was when it when you went to school or? It's actually were- before that. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to do gymnastics. I was doing that a lot. Um, mm-hmm. that was like my main sport. Um, and then it started taking up way too much time because as I got older, I was obviously moving up in levels, and mm-hmm. I was com- a competitive gymnast. So I. Decided to stop doing gymnastics, and um, that was when I had to kind of choose which path I wanted to go on. And mm-hmm. I always knew I wanted to do music, honestly, since I was little. Yeah. So freshman year of high school is when I actually, I think, started really, really taking it serious. And which that's, state were you in? I was in California. Okay, Cali. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you're like, okay, which one? <laughs> <laughs> I just got to make sure. Okay. Yeah, um, and so that was when I, like, got my first voice teacher and... Um, started like actually really really trying to get myself together and you know I spent all of my time I was honestly I'm not even gonna lie I was a horrible student in high school and I used to drive my mom crazy and it was because you know at least I wasn't out there doing like crazy shit like Like I just yeah I wasn't a crackhead I (laughs) was not a crackhead (laughs) you know all I wanted to do was go home and play music that was just what I spent all my time doing. So mm-hmm. I was like, I do not give a shit about my math homework. Right. <laughs> so I remember like, you guys, this is crazy. It's actually crazy. And I've you can't judge things. me. You cannot no, judge fine. me. I had a point where I had 26 missing assignments in math. <laughs> that What does that mean? So you did I had 26 homework assignments. That you did that not I do. That I did not do. That's li- that sounds like me. That's fine. But I'm, oh, I dropped God. out of college though. So it's like. It was, it was bad. I remember like the actual like conversation when my mom, (laughs) my mom used, I used to pray every day. I'd go home and be like, Oh my God, please, please don't check. (laughs) Please don't check the like grade portal, please. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) And I remember like the day she did. Oh my God. It was actual hell. She said, listen, we're moving to fucking Michigan. (laughs) No, literally. No, (laughs) no, but she, oh man, she was so mad at me. That was like our constant battle was me having missing assignments and that's where you know it's crazy that's where people don't really like the parents they don't really understand like why is my kid like i know they're they're smart i know they're but yeah. when you are of a, a creative it's, this shit is a mental illness <laughs> like we no, can't it get literally it literally you is. can't get it out of our head so it's like you want me to sit here and focus on this i can't get these you know this out of my head on what i actually want to do yeah so you two played a big part in your life, I would assume. Yeah, it did, definitely. Do you feel like you learned more at YouTube University than Berkeley? <laughs> Honestly, no. No? I think okay. I think Berkeley challenged me because mm. I, I feel like when I was in high school and, like, growing up, I was, like, the singer of the school or mm. whatever. Or, like, you know, people knew that I was a musician. Her. You and were her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, especially, like, when I did the voice and stuff, like, of yep. course – um, but when I got to Berkeley, I was like, oh my God, I'm like surrounded by people who are just as good or better yeah. than me. Wow. And okay. it was like a wake up call, mm-hmm. which obviously you, ne- I think you truthfully need to be in those settings all as much as you can, if yep. you want to get better, because mm-hmm. you can't like be the best all the time. If you want to be the best, you have to be around the best. Yep. And so it honestly was kind of 
a culture shock for a second. <laughs> like I had to to really get out of my head because mm-hmm. I struggled with comparisons so bad. Wow. Like so bad. Especially because when I finally chose my major, I chose to f- just focus on songwriting. Mm-hmm. We had to just play our songs in front of everybody every week. Wow. And, you know, that might seem like whatever, but you know, no, it's, it's actually like scary. Like, yeah. Especially, like, when you know that it's not a good song. That and is, like, the worst thing. you know there's a bunch thing. of other people that are judging you in their head, like, oh, yes, I'm not exactly. do that <laughs> And, like, especially because, you know, it's impossible for every song you write to be good. Like right. it's impossible. You have, mm-hmm. and that was like my biggest struggle. Is like, okay, I I have to let myself write bad songs, mm. because otherwise I'm never gonna write something good. Because I I would struggle with starting to write something, and then if I didn't like it, I would stop, and I'd be like so I would get like insecure about it, yeah. and it would like paralyze me. And that I struggled with that for so long, and honestly, it pushed like Berkeley pushed me out of that because. I had to show up and play my shitty song in front of everybody <laughs> and just say, fuck it, whatever. Right. Because, and that, it honestly was so hard because I just, I hold like a really high standard for myself. And yeah. like, it honestly made me so, so anxious to play like stuff I was not proud of in, pe- in front of people. And now, crazy. and now I'm just like, you know what? I do not give a shit. <laughs> right. I, I know I have my songs I love and I know now like, Every song I write, like, as long as I'm writing and I'm getting the shitty things out, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to land on something that I really love eventually. That's, That's um, so, do you know how to cook? Uh, kind of, <laughs> have I you guess. Ever, have you ever made <laughs> spaghetti? Yes. So, when you check to see if it's done, do you throw it at the wall and see if it sticks? No, I just bite the noodle. <laughs> <laughs> okay so basically what you were telling me is like it sounds like like when i'm making pasta you gotta throw it at the wall and if it sticks then it sticks yeah pretty much but you gotta throw it if it don't stick then it ain't ready yeah i remember um justin timberlake said this once Shout out to i don't justin. know why like i remember this but i do know why but um he said like don't like dare to suck like don't yep. be afraid to suck because mm-hmm. You know, we wouldn't accomplish anything if we were like and like embrace the cringe. Because honestly, like it's it's gonna happen. And I'm going you know. to I'm not ignoring you. I'm going oh, no, to no, no, find no, something. <clears throat> I posted on my story today, and I want you to listen to this. Oh shit, you don't have your phones, but you them. Oh hold on. Hold oh on. wait, I I saw this. I watched it. <laughs> And that's basically, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but that's basically what you're saying is, like, the same thing. Like, if you feel like you're going to rescue yourself from that situation, you're not going to grow. Like, by rescuing yourself, I'm saying you could have pulled back from going to that class. Like, I'm not going to do this. Yeah, or just what I was doing the whole time where I would just write a song and if it, I thought it sucked or if I thought it wasn't going to be good enough, mm-hmm. I would stop. Yeah. And I had to just be like, no, literally just, like, I remember actually this, like, vivid memory. I was, like, subleasing this apartment. <clears throat> in um in the summertime of 2019 mm-hmm. and i remember like i was actually going through it so hard i was like i i it was one of the first times that i ever questioned myself like should i be doing this type of mm. thing if i can't you know i'm i haven't written something in like months at this point and i remember i was like crying in my room like i had you know like the type where you like just don't even care if it's dark the lights are right. off like you're like <laughs> so i can see but <laughs> like i'm just sitting in the dark right and i remember like i didn't have air conditioner i was hot as fuck i was like literally going through it like so hard sweating in the dark is yeah, crazy yeah and then <laughs> and crying i right. was it was so bad and i remember like i actually just told myself like i was like okay I am not going to sleep until I finish a song. Mm. And after I did that, it obviously took me some time still. But once I forced myself to do that, that was like the beginning of like getting myself out of it. Dope. So basically yeah. you had to go through. That's like um. you had to go through a downtime to realize that you're passionate enough to say, I'm going to fight through this. Instead yeah. of sitting and sulking in it and saying, like, shit, I'm fucking terrible and I'm not yeah. going. And you actually, but it was important what you said is that, um, like, don't, don't be too held up on, like, putting out shitty, like, shit in front of people. 
because that helps you know like if it's good enough because it might be shit to you but other people will receive it like it's the best shit they ever heard that's what my mom tells me oh god and i know she's gonna like want to listen to this (laughs) she's gonna be like oh my god because i have songs that like for the first little demo cd i ever made Mm -hmm. um and i just don't like them i do not like them and my mom is like but this one is so good like (laughs) like people love this one and i'm Uh like i don't like it but you know I listened again, and I think I was too hard on myself, but yeah. um, that's definitely true. I, I know that's true. So it's definitely good. Like, now, like, I'm a lot better with all of that, and, you know, I I learned a lot at Berkeley. And that I think that was, like, the main thing I took from it mm-hmm. um, was just being able to, to know, like, just because I write a shitty song does not mean that I am, like, a shitty musician right, or something. Exactly. Like, it doesn't – it has nothing to do with that. And mm-hmm. I think – what I said before about like intertwining my confidence and what I do is just, it can get toxic. So I, it honestly helped me a lot with getting through that stuff. Yeah, no. And that's important because we have a lot of um, artists that watch our show. That's like younger Mm -hmm. and, you know, looking for inspiration. I think that's one of the most important things that someone can hear is, okay, just because I've, I'm not at that point yet. It's still just keep doing what you love and it'll come to you. That's a really good point because I feel like I lost the reason why I was doing it in the first place. Mm. Like, I was so worked up on if it's good. Like, am I good? Like, are people going to think it's good? Like, and it's like, oh, my God. Like, I literally, I think that's why I ever questioned it in the first place. And I knew, like, in the moment I never thought I was going to quit or anything. Like, I I don't even have a plan B for myself, honestly. (laughs) Um, Shout out to plan B. (laughs) Shout out plan B, actually. (laughs) Um, and be safe. But, yeah. um, <laughs> sorry, I, I told you I say random shit. I'm sorry, I'm so dead. Um, but fuck, what was I saying? We were talking about how. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, um, I forgot. I was about to make something up. <laughs> <laughs> I lost the reason why yes, I loved doing it, it so much, uh-huh. and it was because it is like a therapeutic thing. It brought me so much joy, and I don't know why I ever like. I mean, I do know why, but. Mm-hmm. I had to just remind myself that it's not about people liking it. And, you know, obviously you want people to like it, but I feel like the only things that people like are when it's genuine. And it's Mm -hmm. like, you can tell when somebody is authentic in their art. And I feel like I wasn't being authentic. I was just trying to, I don't even know what I was trying trying to to do. I was just trying to please other people. Yeah, I was trying, I don't even, I was trying to please myself. I didn't even know what I was aiming for. I just... Shout I was so lost. Yourself. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> relax. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta relax. No. I'm, I'm but good. um, so are you Italian? Your name no, sounds Italian. I'm Mexican, actually. That's lit. Nate's Mexican. Remember the guy we were talking about? You said the Mexican prince. Oh yeah. Oh, so you're the Mexican princess. That's lit. <laughs> I'll take it. So okay. So you grew up in New Mexico. <laughs> now I'm now I'm interested. So being Mexican in New Mexico. Were they like, oh, you're not a real Mexican, you're in New Mexico, not Mexico? No. <laughs> Honestly, I, I didn't, like, spend a ton of time in New Mexico. Like, I say I'm from there because that's where I was born. That's where right, right. I still, you know, I said earlier, all my family is still in New Mexico mm-hmm. and um, El Paso. But honestly, like, most people are Mexican there. That's like, there's, Yeah. <laughs> and in El Paso, you get the best Mexican food. That's what I was thinking, like, because your dad was FBI agent. I think that would have been yeah. perfect for him to be in Texas because that's where they smuggling stuff at, right? Yeah, and the, he was doing a lot of stuff with, like, the cartel and stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, that's, like, he, doesn't, he, would, he doesn't tell me a lot. I don't think he's allowed to yeah, tell Yeah, I don't think everything. so, but that's fire. Shout out to the cartel and your dad working with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you said, right? He was working with them? No, he wasn't working <laughs> no, <joking>. with them. <laughs> No. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just outing my dad right now. He <laughs> right? worked, with the, worked with the cartel. No, that's hilarious. No. I wouldn't do you like that. But um, That is so funny. So now that you're in Nashville, like, I know you mentioned um, there's different circuits. I would have never thought. I thought people just go there and they get on, they'd be like, hey, I can, you know, sing. I can do that. And you just hop on. So now is that something that is a daily thing for you? No. So actually, I'm trying to get far away from broadway now okay far that's, away that's i that's why like i actually had a huge transition phase up at like i told myself this year i'm like i this is like my year to do my own shows mm. and that's my main goal that was my 
I did my little vision board, me and my roommate. Oh. Bestie, shout out to Tala. Yeah, shout she's out gonna, to Bestie. Shout out to Tala. <laughs> does she sing? She does. She's phenomenal. Love wow. her. She's she's literally the best. But um, we made our vision boards and yeah. So that's like my m- main goal this year is to um do my own shows. So I'm when really say, looking forward to that. When you say do your own shows, you mean like of only you or you yeah. haven't? Okay, like my music, only my music. Dope. Um, Dope. I don't no want to do songs. covers <laughs> and I don't want to trash talk Broadway, the circuit I was in. Yeah, but there's a lot of things I really did not like about it um i felt like i was not growing in any way it was not helping me Mm. in any way um so it did help me financially yeah but that was it but then (laughs) and that's important for people to know too is like when you're actually like wanting to grow past it some people will settle for that and there are people that's been playing there for 30 years and yeah. they're, they're comfortable with that. Yeah, and that's fine. Like, it honestly is its own thing. Some people absolutely love it. Like, they yeah. love they love the shows. They love, like, they don't have any complaints. Yeah. Um, but that's just not what I want to do. Right. And I wasn't happy with it. And, you know, the amount of times I was actually grabbed by people doing the tip bucket. Like, it mm-hmm. just, there was a lot of problematic things I Oh, like, like people trying to take the tip jar from you? Um, that has happened, but it's also oh like, um, you know, you're dealing with drunk people. It's right, yeah, true. And like, men. Um, <laughs> shout out to drunk men. Um, no, no, we don't do shout not, out. No, <laughs> no shout out. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but there's so many times I would go around with the bucket because they the girls do the bucket. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, I have gotten my ass slapped. Got my oh, ass wow. grabbed. I've been like groped before doing that, and I'm like, I literally don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> wow. So that's a that's a piece of it that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, well, it so makes now sense. That you, yeah. Now that I you feel said like, it. Well, it's also because like I feel like being a guy, you don't have to think about that. Honestly, them old ladies, they be trying, they be trying. Oh, grab you your get butt. the old ladies. They be trying to grab your butt. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how old ladies like that. What? So now that we're on that, I got to ask you, because I ask all of my guests. Old loving ass. Yes. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now that we're on that, I have to ask you, because I've, I ask everybody, and people would be mad at me if I didn't ask you this. So, do you eat ass? <laughs> I'm sorry. Relax, I know, no. <laughs> Mom is watching. I'm sorry. No, it, no, no, it no. It had to be asked. I'm not even going to lie. That was like the last thing I thought you were going to ask me. I, I'm sorry. I, this is one of my questions that I ask on here, and I'm sorry that I had to ask you. But if I didn't, they'd be like, oh, why is she so special you didn't ask her? You had to put him on the spot. Yeah. Um, so no, I have never. That's crazy, isn't it? Because some guys, <laughs> this one girl said, this one girl was on here and said she does it, but she won't do it if the man hikes his legs up for her. <laughs> Um, she said ick. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh I am God. actually so dead. No, because that <laughs> probably would give me the ick, too. Like, ew. Like, I- <laughs> Are you into girls? I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. I am actually dead. That is hilarious. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, yeah, enough of the ass. So <laughs> d- when you're doing that and you're and you're um when that happens, do you have someone with you? I would assume you would have, mm-hmm. like, another. No. No, I they have like security guards there. So yeah. you know, if you tell them to kick them out, they'll do that. But yeah, yeah. um there's a couple times they didn't though. Which actually the security was, didn't. Yeah. So mm. that I don't know. I mean, again, that just comes with it, unfortunately. You right. can't you know, I'm that's what she's saying. You're evolving from that. You're like, that's not what I wanna yeah. be in. But I know it's gonna happen probably no matter what, unfortunately. Mm. Just, you know being a woman. Yeah, and and you know, the industry that I picked unfortunately is very much like looks and sexualized. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's all of it. So, you know, I kind of you, pick and choose my battles, but I you know, maybe if I was like extremely happy with everything else involving that circuit, yeah. And that was just, you know, an unfortunate thing that happens sometimes. Then it would you know, be okay. I'd be like, okay, I can deal with it. But Couple it was just like that on top of everything else. I was like, all right, right. <laughs> I'm so, done. <laughs> yeah, my main thing, she's here. My main thing is um, with Broadway, and this is just me. I'm I'm from up north, 
and where it's, you know, a bunch of people there. We got Hispanic, we got Puerto Rican, Dominican, black, Cuban, all these type of different races, Mexican, everything. But when I'm on Broadway, the only people I see that are like black or whatever are security guards. Mm-hmm. So that's just always my take on that with Nashville is I feel like, um you know, Nashville has their space, but I feel like there's no space for like other genres. Exactly. Yeah. And that's honestly a big reason why I didn't want to do Broadway anymore, too, is mm-hmm. I don't want to sing country. I, yeah. I, I like country and mm-hmm. I like singing it sometimes, but. I don't like, like, the redneck country. I don't like yeah. singing only country. Like, I just wasn't, I wasn't fulfilled in any way. And also, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's not really any room for that, yeah. for anything else, unfortunately. Um, which is why I actually moved here to East, because okay. East Nashville has a way bigger variety of music, right. honestly. It's, like, really upcoming with, with like, alternative. Mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of rock. There's, like, r Here, R&B. you're going to meet a lot of people. Yeah, so... I'm honestly like gonna get on that like right when I leave. I'm I'm not even <laughs> yeah. joking. This kind of like link. like opened a whole new world for me here. I'm like, Bruh. wow. Who are you telling? I said, listen. I told him. I said, I'm gonna do it next week. I hit him up. I said, I'm gonna actually do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need this. Um, but no, this is um, it was dope. It was definitely you know good meeting you and so i caught you at a good time though because now you you're not doing broadway anymore like no i literally i stopped doing that not too long ago um so now i'm actually i'm i actually just went like last week i went around to like a shit ton of places with my card and just introduced myself got a bunch of emails so that's my goal this week email a bunch of places i just need like one more gig that'll kind of keep me afloat um and i'm just actually gonna only do songwriting stuff Okay, I, I wanted one more question. I, I well, I have another space I'm gonna tell you about. That's okay. in Murfreesboro. Fire. But um, do you do sync, like sync um for your lyrics? Like you you write songs for peop for like movies and stuff no, or anything? I actually have you don't tried do that. that yet? I have no? not tried that. Do you got like original like, um, instrumentals you make? Yeah, I have like a bunch of stuff. You need, you need to get on sync because okay, listen. sync and then this place. Yeah, sync licensing in this place and. Put you in a good space, but if you could let the people know where to find you at, where to where to stream your music, and where yes. they can find you on doing live events and all that stuff. Yeah, so I'll give my social media first. So I'm always on Instagram. Instagram is like my main thing. Um, yeah. My Instagram is underscore Ileana V underscore. So that's I L I A N N A V. Um. Yeah. TikTok, Ileana Vera Montez. Uh, Facebook, Ileana Vera Montez. Um, Spotify, Apple Music, Ileana Vera Montez. There you Keep go. Keep it simple. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Because <laughs> they, they always going to find you there. We yeah, I'm, I'm releasing my first EP this year, um, probably in the summer. Um, so, yeah, follow me to keep out for, keep watch for that. That's fine. I'm sorry. We're, we're no, no, you're, the you're totally fine. The camera totally stops fine. at 29 minutes. But listen, so EP coming soon which yes. you're going to do live edition of it here and oh, we're going to record it i'm so down whenever you're ready i would love to do that i think you're dope your spirit is genuine and i think um it'll be a dope collab this year is my year of collaboration so um and expanding because usually i do hip-hop you're my first interview outside of rap shit i love it <laughs> so and we're trying to expand more um but EP coming soon, originals, you performing a bunch of places this year. You're going to have your own event here. Yes. And, um, yeah, my outros are trash. I'm trying to get to it, but. um. Hey, I didn't think it was trash until you said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so, just um, kidding. It's not trash. <laughs> it's not trash at all. So, um, but thank you all for tuning in, man. Ileana Veramontes. Straight out of New Mexico, Michigan, Cali, Boston. You can find her everywhere.